Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on proof by mathematical induction where I'm looking at summations of series. And in this example, we've got to prove that the sum of 2 to the power r, r going from 1 to n, is equal to 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 2. And in the usual way, what we do is we try and prove that it's true for when n equals 1, and then we assume it's true for n equals k, and go on to prove that on that basis it's true for n equals k plus 1. And then if true for n equals 1, it must be true then for n equals 2, 3, 4, and therefore all positive integers. So we start then with testing it for when n equals 1. So we'll just put here when n equals 1. So we have the left hand side is equal to the summation of 2 to the power r going from r equals 1 to 1. So we've just got one term in other words, 2 to the power 1. 2 to the power 1 we know is 2. Now we check out the right hand side, so we've got the right hand side, we can see is 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 2. And when n equals 1, we're going to have 2 to the power 2 minus 2. In other words, 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. So therefore, it's true for n equals 1, because the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So true for n equals 1. OK, well, we've got that. Now we assume that it's true for some particular value of n. So assume true for n equals k, say. k is a positive integer. And if we write down what that means, it means that therefore if we were to do the summation of 2 to the power r, r going from 1 to k, then we would expect the result to be 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2. Wherever there's an n, it's now replaced with a k. So it would be 2 to the power k plus 1 minus 2. And on that basis, okay, we now need to prove true for n equals k plus 1. So if we therefore look at when n equals k plus 1, we've got therefore the sum of 2 to the power r, r going from 1 to k plus 1, must equal the sum of the series for the first k terms, r going from 1 to k of 2 to the power r, plus the last term in the series, the k plus 1th term. And so that's going to be 2 to the power k plus 1. OK, so let's see where this takes us to now. We'll just copy this down again, we've got the sum of 2 to the power r, r going from 1 to k plus 1, is equal to, well we've seen that it's equal to this summation of the first k terms, but we know that that is equal to 2 to the power k plus 1 minus 2. So we've got 2 to the power k plus 1 minus 2. And then we add to that the last term in the series, which will be plus 2 to the power k plus 1. And as usual, when I get to something like this, I like to start to look to see what I'm expecting to get as an answer. When n equals k plus 1, I would hope to get then 2 to the power k plus 1 plus another one, k plus 2 in other words, minus 2. And I can see that I can achieve that if I group together these 2 to the power k plus 1s. I've got two of them, so we've got two lots of 2 to the power k plus 1. I'll put that in brackets so it doesn't look like 22 there. 
2 times 2 to the power k plus 1. And then we've got our minus 2. Well, the minus 2 is looking good because we need that. So as I said, we need 2 to the power k plus 1 plus another one. Now, when you are multiplying two numbers to the same base here, okay, you just add the powers. Remember, this is 2 to the power 1 here. In fact, I'll just write 2 to the power 1 up there. You add the powers. So I can see that I'm going to get 2 to the power k plus 1 plus this one here. 2 to the power k plus 1 plus another one. I'm going to put that k plus 1 in brackets there. And then I've got minus 2. So you can see that it does work when n equals k plus 1. We end up with 2 to the power k plus 1, just like we would have had n plus 1 here. So 2 to the power k plus 1 plus 1 there, minus 2. So it's therefore true for n equals k plus 1. So if it's true for n equals k, since true for n equals k, okay, it's true for n equals k plus 1. And since it's true, it's been proved true for n equals 1, since true for n equals 1, we know that it must be true then for n equals 2, and if true, proved true for n equals 2, it must be true for n equals 3, 4, and so on. So therefore, it must be true for all positive values, integer values of n. And we tend to write that something like this, with a kind of z there with a plus sign. Okay, n is any positive integer. Okay, well I hope that's given you an idea on how we go about using mathematical induction then for proving these results on series.